Hey, right, Sandy Four, Tucker Bravo One, resident of Structure Fire, 14100-14100, Mahogany Avenue, and intersecting Cavalier Street for engine 7454, engine 44, 539, and 6, ladder 62, risk 54, risk 107, taking 54, 42, and 28 with squad 12, ladder 21, engine 44 is red. All you can find Tucker Bravo One. Hi, I'm Stephanie McClooney with the JFRD. I am here in E-Town at our newest fire station, Station 74, and I'm going to give you guys a little tour. So come on in. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. Captain Pullman. Good to be here, Stephanie. Nice to meet Come you. Come on in. So welcome to Fire Station 74. We're the newest uh, station in the city of Jacksonville. This was completed early July of 2022. So, and I'm can you tell here. me a little bit about where you guys are situated, located? Yeah, uh, sure. We are in the community of E-Town. It is southeast Jacksonville. It's a new development. It's uh, very focused on community on technology and sustainability. So with that in mind, they developed this fire station to kind of meet all those needs. Hey, it looks a little different than our traditional. Put this on vibrate. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I'll start giving you the tour. Yep. This is where you come in, have your blood pressure checked, parking out front, you just walk in super quick. Uh, this next area right here is what we call the watch room. From 0700 to 11 o'clock, couldn't figure out what that is, 20 hundred, but uh, we have someone up here 20, or during that time frame to meet walk-ups and visitors, also to handle phone calls and get people when they're needed for different things. So you guys have a lot of people that just come in for we do. blood pressure checks we do. and just to take a tour? Or you guys, what do you guys? All of the above. We have people come in just to meet the firemen here. Mm -hmm. We have people to come in for blood pressure. They want to know if they can drop off. Red band needles, and I mean, there's no shortage of questions people have to come in as far as All right. All right. We'll head this way right here to what we like to call the day room. This is when there is downtime. This is where we like to enjoy most of the leisurely activities. It's like a movie theater. Oh, there. We do training. Anytime there's televised training. So, and for leisurely TV watching, so. so. You guys spend, I mean, I assume you spend a fair amount of time just hanging out. We do, just... we do. Like I said, we'll go in here in the light. We usually have, like I said, we try to get, if you can get a little rest period in, it's it's usually very nice, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty busy. But Our daily routine, we like to start off, we get to work, we check out the unit, then we'll work out for an hour, then we'll go get food, come back, and we'll cook breakfast. And then we'll do a training for an hour. And then usually by that time, it's time to cook, start cooking, cooking for dinner. So anyway, this next room here is the women's bathroom. We do not have any women on this shift, so it's currently empty. Mm -hmm. I'll show it to you. With the sustainability in mind, we have all the, all the faucets in the station, all our timers. So there's no water wasted if you're washing your hands. You can walk away, walk back, and shut off, stuff like that. That's not something that you'll see in most of the earlier built fire stations in, in the city. Also, our motion sensor lighting. Anytime you walk into a room, you'll have most motion sensor lighting that will kick on when you leave. It'll shut off. All the bathrooms are ADA compliant, handicap accessible. Some good girly shampoo. In That's right. <laughs> you head this way, we'll go into the men's bathroom. Here we have your stand up urinal, mm -hmm. three stalls, two showers. Does everybody get their own little locker? Is it assigned or is it? So, now these are this is just a gym pop mm -hmm. men's bathroom, okay. pretty much first come, first serve. 
And we have three sinks over here for shaving, washing hands, and anything else you might want to do in a sink. <laughs> for us, I guess. Once again, all the lights are on a time on the motion sensor and time up operated. Just walking all, all right. the way through. That's right. Mm -hmm. So this was the middle section. Now we're going to go back through that. Just behind the men's bathroom is the co-ed locker room, which is where we just have a okay. large assortment of lockers. Everyone gets a locker. And so in these lockers, I'm just assuming standard. Correct. Your, your, your duty, your duty uniform, any, any personal effects you'd like to have. And, your clothes you changed into or you brought with you so it all stays here you guys it all stays here mm -hmm. so we'll continue on through this way so the second busiest if not the busiest room in the fire station is the kitchen we have a common issue kitchen dining room it's a very large area here you guys spend a lot of time. We spend probably the majority, at least we do a lot of the cooking. The engine does like a lot of the cooking on this shift. So predominantly most of our day is spent in this room cooking mm -hmm. breakfast and dinner. Breakfast and dinner. So you guys are here without breakfast, dinner, and I mean, because you guys are living here. It's we live here like, 24 hours a yeah. day, seven days a week. So our shifts are based on 24 hour shifts. So we have three shifts. So for 24 hours at eight o'clock in the morning, we start we go get food, we all pitch in money. We, we go buy breakfast and dinner for the day. Usually, well, before the inflation, it was about $10 a day per man for breakfast and dinner. It's moved to about 15, but you can eat pretty well for about $15 a man, breakfast mm -hmm. and dinner. So, and like I said, we'll go to the store once a day with all of our cash, we'll pitch in and we try to eat healthy. So it's a little more difficult now being more expensive. But. How do you guys decide who cooks and all that? Is there like an assignment or is it just a dedicated So each station, each station is different. Uh, we Usually it's rotated on a sort of like watch. You rotate people each shift, yeah. someone different cooks until you have someone who's really bad that can't cook. <laughs> in which case you usually rotate them out of the thing and you just, so usually yeah. like I said, for us, the engine cooks every shift, so. And then how many guys are you cooking for? So each station is different. We have five here in engine and rescue, right? We ride three on our engine and two on our rescue. So we cook for five every day and there's always leftovers. The deal is never run short. You don't ever want to be short. So you guys buy the leftovers, like different crews come in? And we out. do, yes. We also have staples. Um, so we also have ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, jelly, peanut butter, the stuff that you have at a house that you know you buy because they're your groceries. Mm -hmm. We pitch in money every month and we buy what we call staples. This is our staples locker right here. Makes sense. Yeah. So you're not buying ketchup every show for yeah. 15 bucks. Like I said, these are just the, it's, yeah. it's more than just condiments, but coffee, stuff like that. We keep that on hand. Mm -hmm. So that if every fire station, this is it right here. They've, you can make TV shows out of the kitchen table conversation. So it's a nice big family you know, oriented uh, career and we, have some very <laughs> entertaining conversations at the table. So solve all the all the world's all problems. All the world's problems every morning and night. We solve we solve them all. And then what's behind those doors? So this is unique, I would say, to just this fire station. This was the first time they've done an outdoor area. Uh, there's probably some fancy word for it, but it's an outdoor kitchen area, outdoor sitting area. So Obviously, this doesn't come furnished, so we're all pitching in money and uh, developers and a lot of the builders have been kind enough to kind of say, hey, can we help with anything with the mm -hmm. opening? So we're nice going to do space. some sitting yeah. stuff over here and I think we're going to have an outdoor kitchen area over here with a black stone. And we have a little egg over there. So, but it's a fantastic area, covered out of the sun, mm -hmm. wonderful area to sit and enjoy ourselves. Right. Good fall evening, winter yeah. evening back here. Uh, this is the first station that I know of uh, in Jacksonville where we have key card entries. So one of the three, E-Town, which is the community we're in, is technology. So all key card accessed just for efficiency and convenience. It's just the latest and greatest in technology. I'm sure other places, you know, obviously downtown has stuff like that, but fire stations are becoming more than just an old commodity. They're sort of a new age. Mm -hmm. We're coming up with the time, so. Cool. Anyway, we'll go in this way. All right, so this right here would be our manpower board. So I knew I noticed you had a question here. Mm -hmm. So 
We'll do time swaps with each other. So this is based on shift. So like I said, we run three 24 hour shifts. So this would be A shift, B shift, and C shift. And then this is the engine, this is the rescue over here. And since we're new, we still have some stickers to get and station patches, but obviously for- And then the screens, can you have you guys And then the screen. So this is a dispatch screen. When a call comes in, this will light up and it'll show you the address and who's dispatched on the call. And it usually starts off with a nice loud tone to stop your heart for a second. <laughs> As we wind down, we uh, what we call the bunk room, which would be most people's bedroom. This is a co-ed bunk room here. Okay. Obviously, male, female, we like to have a little privacy, but still enough to feel like you're in the, in the room together. Yeah. So dispatch boards, all of the bunk rooms in the station and most of the rooms have these panels which would tell you, so any, any room that you're in when the call comes in, you know where you're going and who's going. It's cold in here too. It is cold in here. <laughs> it's chilly. Yeah. We have a lot of fans in here, so. So then each uh, each shift you guys bring in your own bedding, everything, correct, you keep correct. it here, how does that work? So with manpower, some people are off, some people are working for other people. Typically you'll take your fire gear and your bedding and your personal effects with you every day anytime you transfer. Okay. So each day you'll make and tear down your bed, put your gear on the truck. So depending on who's here and where they are, they typically, have it. I think the trend now is to have these little bins. That wasn't a big thing when I was coming up, so. Okay. But. So everybody just carries their bins. The kids around. love carrying their little bins mm -hmm. around. Like they just threw it rolled up <laughs> over our shoulder. Sort of paramilitary-esque, so. Yep, everybody has a side table. And then is this just, um... I mean, who, like who stays here? I guess. Okay, so anybody anybody, anybody under a chief. Okay. So with the chief would be the first level of administrative for us, for officers. So this would be all what we would consider the rank and file, captains, lieutenants, engineers, firefighters. So another thing that you will not, I promise you won't find this in any other fire station, is all of these outlets have USB plugs in them for the living to charge your phones. Obviously, as time has evolved, cell phones have become a big, that's thing. handy, yeah. This is, like I just said, there's a lot of built-in additional features that you won't find in other fire stations mm -hmm. in this new one, which is, like I said, it's great. Everyone enjoys it. I know I like those in my house, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. It's very convenient. Yep. All right, so you've seen this is the what I consider the gin pop bunk room. Then we'll have the chief's quarters this way. All right, and here we have the chief's bathroom. Same as, uh, same as the uh, bathroom before, they're all ADA compliant. <laughs> Handicap accessible. All motion censored lighting. This toilet's also a motion censored where you're done, you get up, you don't have to flush it. <laughs> it's just a convenience. Like I said, most of these features you have in any commercial building, but in your house they're not. So this is a nice, it's just that they're nice addition, nice features. This room also doubles as a chief's office. It's an all in one room for him. So when he's doing manpower, he'll sit over here have access to his resource management, field phone calls. He also sleeps in here. His personal lockers are all in his own office. There we go. So, all right. We'll head out to the bay. All right. So all, all new fire stations in Jacksonville are built with a three bay quarters like this. Just, it, it leaves room for repositioning apparatus and future growth. And you so guys, the, your apparatus that you have here at this time are? Correct, so we have an engine and a rescue. So, and like I said, if, if they want to add a ladder, if this area grows, they need a second engine. They don't have to rebuild a fire station. Like I said, when you plan with the future in mind, you have opportunity to do that without as much cost. So. And then now you guys, I mean, you are new as you just opened within the past month or so, but yeah. you guys have been riding together for a while, correct? Correct. So once they once they were going to put this engine in service, they staffed us at a at the busiest station in Jacksonville, and so we ran out of their station with two engines, which was even then still very busy. So it's it's hard to keep up with the growth in such a booming when the economy was booming. So, but the city does a great job. Like I said, the mayor uh, Lenny Curry and the chief Keith Bowers have done a fantastic job of opening new fire stations and keeping everything running. So. Can you tell us a little bit about like 
Absolutely. So what we have here is our breathing air system, cascade refiller. So we breathe air inside fire, inside the fires we go to. This is how we would refill our SCBA cylinders. And like I said, it's just incredibly convenient. You used to have, you'd have one of these in every four or five stations that you'd travel to after a fire, you'd have to go to the station to fill it up. Now all the stations are built with the cascade system and just a very, very convenient feature to have inside the station. Mm -hmm. And then what about, what are these that so I see So these are here? the diesel exhaust systems. Once again, the in an effort to be as clean and green as possible, you don't want the exhaust from the diesel engines or the uh, gasoline engines to fill the bay. So what you do when, when you pull in, you'll attach these to the exhaust manifold right there, and it will pull all that air up and exhaust it out into the outside air. Drip pans to collect any oil and transmission fluid that may leak out throughout the ship. And what is this that I see over here? And it's like little stick figures. <laughs> That's right. So we'll, we'll get to this in a second. All right. So uh, gear carries carcinogens on it. Even if you wash it, there's still some residual. Mm -hmm. Just like the diesel exhaust system here, we carry all of our bunker gear that's not being used, not on the truck, we keep in the bunker gear room, right this way. It also has its own exhaust system. It's also closed off to living quarters. We don't, we, we don't carry any, we don't have gear from this area into any living area. So we, we no gear beyond here. Keep so, it all separate just for, I mean, protecting you guys. You could deal with it enough. This is for our safety and hazardous environments and fires and and so Any assuming IDLH environments. your gear stays here unless you're transferring to another Correct. It never Correct. goes home with you. It never goes home with you. It stays right here. So we also have two sets of gear. Once again, the mayor and the chief have been incredibly just amazing at safety and developing different things. We have second set of gears now that we can't carry above all of the gear here to where if you have a fire in your gear, we wash in the extractors out back, which we'll see in a second. And you can immediately put your second set of gear on the truck to stay in service. So you guys do wash these? Things. We do wash them. Okay. It's not the same commercial, <laughs> they're not the same residential washer at your house, but yeah, we have commercial washers here. And that little stick man thing was the dryer. So I'll show you those now. It has its own hot water heater, its own cold, cold water supply, and its own uh, soap. And are you guys washing gear after every Every fire. Uh -huh. Pretty every much fire. anytime there's okay. exposure where you would have carcinogens on it, you would want to come in mm -hmm. after the fire. We bag it up on scene in red and red uh, excuse me, black trash bags on scene so that you don't have it in the cab with you. We bring it back here, wash it, or put our second set of gear on service first and then wash it. Let's take it seriously. That's right, we do. Health is uh cancer on the fire service has been a big issue in the last really forever and now it's just coming to it's, it's coming to the limelight. Yeah. Like I said, every uh, politicians all the way down to you know the public want want to see change and try to reduce cancer on the fire service. So we're trying to any way we can we're reducing contact with car carcinogens. All right, and you guys is doors. You. The doors. I mean, they look pretty fancy. The doors are fancy. <laughs> so, like I said, this is sort of one of those things. Doors, if you've ever at your house or wherever. They're very slow operating, right? So in an effort for us to be quick, we keep the back doors down. And when we respond on a call, these doors open very quickly. So they're also bifold. They're not the old track running that, you know, the whole time motors, whatever. They're very efficiently operated with a chain up top, which you can see would be, we have glass day here. Most stations have glass day. We have an extraordinary amount of glass here. So anyway, these are, stay with and also very quiet was most garage doors are extremely noisy. So if we're inside, we catch a call. Like I said, very quick efficiency. The, like I said, this was a, one, of the, one of the best, if not the best in the city. So. Anyway, so we're gonna get right over this way. Whether you walk around the block, whether you do something, you're doing something every day for an hour to keep yourself in shape. So this is, this would be the fitness room, this way. Now this is the air conditioned fitness space. So we have, like I said, we've got a few guys here that box, so we're gonna have 
you know, the speed bag, we got a roll mounted bag and different things, a heavy bag. We're going to put those in here. Uh, the treadmills that we have don't fit. So, like I said, we've ordered a, a bunch of supplies. The city's gracious enough to order us rollers and speed bikes or, and treadmills. So, do you guys do like uh, workouts together? You guys we do. As long as it gets done. We do. Like I said, everyone's different. Not everyone lifts heavy. Most people, if you're a cardio guy, you're not going to come in here and lift a ton of weight. But for the most part, everybody work out, does workouts together. So, like I said, the bay is where we're going to do a lot of the heavier lifting. And, Everything was built, like I said, with efficiency and convenience and green design and, and thought. So, yeah. like I said, this is a standard uh, design for the new age fire engines. We're getting our new one here in about a month, but they're just newer and greater. The new ones are going to have tack four suspension, a lot of back injuries in the fire department, be it from getting beat down on the front of the engine or carrying stuff. Uh, one way they've, just, they've done with eliminating that is by having the tack four suspension. Which, if, if you're a fireman and you've been a fireman for any length of time, it's it's one thing that they have gone away away from is the rear-mounted ladder rack, the, the ladder slots. They've done the electric fold-down ladder systems. Once again, it's just one way where you don't have to hurt yourself carrying something heavy to load and unload it. So these have two locks. That whole ladder system folds down, and you can load a ladder from the street. It's really convenient. And they're still red. Awesome, right. Nick. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thank you so much for coming. Like I said, it's been a it's been a privilege to be assigned to the station, and we look forward to. You guys have a beautiful station. Yeah. Thank you so mm -hmm. much.